Track maintenance is an essential part of railway safety. It ensures that our railways are safe and in good shape. However, if one of these operations is done incorrectly, it can lead to something minor, like a delay, but it can also lead to something much worse. And that's exactly what happened in Cumbria 13 years ago today. This is the story of the Greyrig train derailment. On the 23rd of February 2007, train 1 Sierra E3, the 1715 Virgin West Coast service, was heading from Euston Station in London, England, to Central Station in, L in Glasgow, Scotland. 1S83 consisted of a nine car class 390 Pendolino electrical multiple unit set, or EMU for short, with set 390033 making up the train. Carriages 69233 Coach A, meaning 69933 Coach B. 69833 Coach C, 69733 Coach D, 68833 Coach E, 69633 Coach G, 69533 Coach H, 69433 Coach G, and 69133 Coach K at the rear. This particular unit was named the City of Glasgow. 105 passengers and 4 crew on board that night, with 50 year old Ian Black as the driver. Just after 8pm, the train had just passed Kendall Cumbria and was now approaching Grey Rig. The speed limit on this stretch of track is 95 miles an hour. Just ahead, across the Docker Viaduct, were two sets of points controlled by Lambert ground frame. These points allow trains to cross from the up line to the down line in emergencies or during track maintenance. However, there is a problem with the points that no one knows about. On board the train, everything seemed normal. The passengers started to settle into the journey, and then they began to relax. However, as the train made its way around the bend at 95 miles per hour, and as the front carriage reached the points, disaster. The train plows off the tracks just after 8:15 p.m. The lead carriage 69233 jackknifed with coach B causing 69233 to fall down the embankment and turn onto its right side and came come to rest in the field with damage to its right side and its front end. 69933 Coach B, having jackknifed with carriage 69233, skidded along the embankment on its left side while coming to rest with its lead end resting on the embankment hanging over the tracks at its right and its rear end resting in the field. Carriages C, D and E had suffered a similar fate, while the last four carriages at the rear of the train remained upright and only suffered minor damage. The driver, Ian Black, was trapped in the cab of 69233. However, he did manage to use his phone to call for help. Eventually, a few minutes after the accident, rescuers arrived on the scene. Up to 500 rescue personnel attended the scene, along with 12 ambulances, 5 fire engines, the RAF, 3 civilian mountain rescue teams, and a helicopter from the Merseyside Police. The evacuation was completed at midnight, and the carriages were scanned with thermal imagery equipment to confirm that everyone had been evacuated. The train driver, Ian Black, broke his neck when he was thrown forward into the instrument panel in front of him on impact. Luckily, specialised cutting equipment was used to cut Black free from the wreckage, and he was taken to hospital. Narrow country lanes and muddy fields, however, hindered the rescue operation, along with the rain and the darkness. With emergency vehicles having to be towed by tractors or farm vehicles after becoming bogged in the muddy fields. Survivors were initially received at Greyrick Primary School that had been opened as a survivor reception centre. 
Hospitals in the area, including some over the Scottish border in Dumfries and Galloway, were put on standby. Five passengers were admitted to the Royal Preston Hospital in critical condition. Sadly, 84-year-old Margaret Maston from Glasgow died in hospital from trauma she suffered in the accident. 30 people sustained serious injuries, 58 received minor, and the remaining passengers were unhurt. But then people began to ask, how could the train derail like this? And why? Was it faulty maintenance? Vandalism? What was it? An investigation by the Rail Accident Investigation Branch, or RAIB, found stunning findings. Points 2B were in a really bad state. The investigation found that there had been a loss of gauge separation of the point switch blades. The stretcher bars, which hold the point switch blades the correct distance apart, were found to be either disconnected or missing. Out of the three bars, one was not in position, two, another had nuts and bolts missing, and two had been fractured. The points were supposed to be inspected on the Sunday before the derailment. However, the investigation found that this inspection had not been carried out and that the fault had gone undetected for five days. Following the RAIB report, Network Rail released a statement in which its chief executive, John Armit, described how the organisation was, quote, devastated to conclude the condition of the points was the cause of the accident. The report noted that the Network Rail New Measurement train ran over the site on the 21st of February. This train uses lasers and other equipment to measure track geometry and other features like overhead line height and stagger. It isn't used to inspect points. The suggestion that the train's video footage could have been used to detect the fault in the points was turned down as they would have had to go through days of video footage at super slow motion to look for the faults and that would have taken months. On the 13th of January 2012, the Office of Rail Regulation announced that Network Rail was going to be prosecuted under Section 3 of the Health and Safety at Work Act of 1974 for the company's failure to provide and implement suitable and sufficient standards, procedures, guidance, training, tools and resources for the inspection and maintenance of fixed stretch of our points. At the first hearing at Lancaster Magistrates Court on the 28th of February 2012, Network Rail indicated an intention to plead guilty to the charges. The company was fined a total of £4,118,037 on the 4th of April 2012. In the end, the 39003 was formally written off on the 30th of November 2007. The fates of carriages A, B, C, D and E are unknown, but it's likely the area was scrapped, used as spare parts or put into storage. G and J were probably put into storage, while H and K were taken to the Virgin Training Centre and crew for training purposes, and that's where they are to this day. But this crash does have a legacy. It shows that if you're a rail maintenance worker and you make a mistake, you're not just putting one life at risk, you're putting lots of others at risk too.